So let's push the limits a little. I'm going to give you a hypothetical. So we've got a device that we know. We figured out how to work the motor system. It's working great. Now we figured out where a, a nodal region is that can, that can work on memory. And we've got an MRI system and a genetic test gen and sequencing together that can tell you if you have a family history that you're going to get Alzheimer's. And it's going to start when you're 60. So you're 59. You know your memory is going to start going away next year. Is it appropriate to think about a neuroprosthesis be for that person who's going to turn 60 to, to help protect their memory or as long as you possibly can from the effects of Alzheimer's? Would that, how, how do you guys think about that? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would. But, then, but then if you can fix, you can enhance. And then the young kids will say, well, wait, you know, why can't I get that neuroprosthetic and I'll have enhanced memory and I'll do really well in school and I'll do all kinds of issues <laughs> come about. But, well, you know, yeah. I think the border between treatment and enhancement is an interesting one. So here's an example. Um, imagine that you, uh, that you have a, an implant, well, these exist, for vision. Okay. So uh, what that means, right, is that I can't see and so you're going to give me something where I'm going to have a little camera, say, mounted on my glasses, and it's going to look around the world and it's going to allow me to see uh, what's around me. And that makes a lot of sense, and that's restoration of function, right? Makes sense. But I say, well, hold on. What I really want to do in the evenings, I want to read, okay? Now, what I could do is I could look at my Kindle, but that introduces a lot of noise. Wouldn't it be better to just have my iPhone talk to the device and put the text directly in? Now, surely that's a good idea. That, you should do that, right? I think that makes sense. I don't think anyone would have a problem with a blind person being able to read directly from their iPhone. Okay, but if you can do that, then does that mean that I can also uh, use it as a general interface for browsing the web? Well, you know, it still makes sense, right? <laughs> but then the next person says, oh, wait, wait, I can, t I can have my brain talk directly to my iPhone. I want one, too. And, <laughs> and you know, this is a, it's a, it's a very, you know, where, where does that border come? And I think this is where, again, all these layers of, you know, it's not as if I can go buy one at Walgreens and put it in myself, right? Uh, these are not going to ever be over-the-counter treatments. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we have lots of examples of treatments where, you know, look at amphetamines uh, as a treatment for um, ADHD in children, right? That's a, it's, it's a real disorder and it really helps lots of children and there are lots of people who'd like to get their hands on them. And, uh, you know, sometimes that happens uh, in, in, and bad things can happen, but uh, on the balance, we've got a system for dealing with that. And in some ways, the risk here is less because it's not like you can get your buddy to give you his brain implant at school. That's not going to work. <laughs> so. I think we have to develop technologies that we can prevent you know, Alzheimer's or, or, or diagnose it early. Because genetic testing, for example, you know, BRCA1, BRCA2 for breast cancer, uh, you know, it's only 5% of the patients. So the fact that you have you know, the mutation doesn't necessarily you know, have, you have a, a you know, time clock that works that way. It's all stochastic probability-wise. So I think you have the early diagnosis is very key. Key. And I think we're talking about therapeutics here, but I think the diagnosis, understanding, you know, early onset or even preventing the disease down the line, I think these are actually more uh, important, uh, you know, from the point of view of treatment, uh, because, you know, how do you want to treat Alzheimer's? That's the other option. So you have detected it, you know, how are you going to, at what stage do you start? Do you start early? Do you start mid, late? So. Your, your enhancement question reminds me of the, you know, the, the surgical joke where a patient comes in the office and says, well, doctor, will I be able to play the piano well after surgery? And you say, of course you will. We're not going to hurt your piano. Because, well, that's great because I couldn't play before. <laughs> so, uh